Hey folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge. As you saw on the title of the thumbnail, there's two things in this video. Uh, the Patreon winner for the month, that's for September. A couple days late, but we'll, we're getting there. And an unboxing of whatever we've got in here. First off, uh, the Patreon winner. Why do I pay, do Patreon winners? What's this about? Some people are having questions and things because I've been doing this for over a year. Uh, but that some new people don't know about this. Uh, every YouTube channel uh, takes money to make. You know, some people say, but it's free to upload videos to YouTube. Uh, yes, it is. It's free for me to take my video file and put it up onto YouTube. But it takes time and money to create the file, the, the YouTube video file. Uh, certainly takes loads and loads of time. Uh, for me, this is you know the main full-time thing I do. I, I, on average, spend about 10 to 12 hours a day working on these videos. Uh, in large part, it takes me so long to do these simple videos because I've got a disability and uh, it takes me just a really long time to do stuff because uh, my chronic pain does have an effect on you know how quickly I can think through stuff and, and do stuff. Um, I've got a pretty good brain in my head. Uh, <laughs> I've got a master's degree that I earned, but uh, with my chronic pain, it's just really, really being uh, tough for me. It's one of the reasons why I can't earn uh, a regular income at a normal type job, but that's besides the point. The thing is, I live on a small disability pension, make my way that way. Uh, but I don't have enough money to buy all the knives that I need to review. So there's a couple ways I get knives. I get them given to me by manufacturers and vendors. That's actually a very small percentage. I get them at a discount from some uh, vendors or some manufacturers. That's pretty common. Um, or thirdly, I use the money that I earn from the advertising on YouTube. If you use my links to buy things, Sometimes some of my links that are below the videos are referral links and I get a small commission, 3-4% or something off of those sales. And that gives me some money to help buy more knives to do reviews and Patreon. So if you want to become a Patreon supporter and send me a monthly gift of $2 or more, uh, it's in, done in US dollars, um, I'd very much appreciate that. As much as you give me is just great. And everyone who gives me $2 a month or more gets put on a list. And at the end of the month, well, at the beginning of the following month, I do a draw from that list. And uh, whoever wins gets a knife that I reviewed in the previous month. And I let the winner pick which knife they want. Usually I give them some choices. Uh, I want to give out a knife that is worth more than just the very cheapest thing. Uh, but not necessarily the most expensive knife because sometimes some of the more expensive knives I've had to purchase and you know it's worth more than what I get in from Patreon in any given month. And just to be totally transparent, right now I'm getting in just under a hundred dollars a month from Patreon supporters. Um, Patreon takes a tiny percentage to process the money and stuff. Um, so I get in you know roughly a hundred dollars US from Patreon every month. And uh Lately, you know, it's been going down a little bit. So if you want to become a Patreon supporter, that's awesome. I very much appreciate that. And uh, there's no contracts. You can stop whenever you want. You can change the amount that you donate whenever you want. Uh, and that's just fine. But I do get a little bit um, of a strange feeling when one of the Patreon supporters wins. And, um, you know, a month or two later, they stop being a Patreon supporter. If you want to be a Patreon supporter primarily for the reason that you get a chance to win a knife, uh, just please forget it. If you want to become a Patreon supporter because you want to support Canadian Cutting Edge, you're the kind of supporter I'm looking for. So what I do is I just uh, take my list of supporters this week, uh, this month it was right around 30 supporters. So I went to Google and Google's got a tool that uh, it's just pick a random number tool and you tell it to pick a number between 1 and, in my case, 30. So between 1 and 30. And I told it, pick a number. I pressed that button. And it came up with 25. And here's a screenshot of that. 
So I took my list and I looked down. And the 25th name of the people that supported me last month is Paul Rail. Hopefully I pronounced your name correctly, Paul. Sorry if I didn't. And uh, you win. And I was kind of silly with my sale that I was doing. I sold a couple of the month uh, knives that I had reviewed in uh, September. So I'm going to give you your choice of any of those knives that I have left or the flashlight that I reviewed in September. And I'll pro I, I will also give you a second surprise as well. But you pick what you want. Do you want the... Sam Ren Mu 9001, or the 9015, or the S721. Uh, let's see, are those all the Sam Ren Mu's I got left? Yep, the S721 is a fixed blade. Um, the Best Tech Spike, uh, watch the video review on that before you choose that one, because there is a tiny issue with the pivot, and you need to know about that. Um, pivot screw's got an issue, and I will be able to send you a replacement pivot screw when I get one. It works right now just fine, but it doesn't come apart. The knife doesn't come apart. At least I haven't been able to take it apart yet. Uh, or the Convoy C8 Plus flashlight, or the HX, uh, HX Outdoors uh, GJ05. That's the, <laughs> that's a weird knife. That's the scissors knife, <laughs> tactical scissors knife. Or the Cold Steel Kudu. And that was a really, really budget knife. You're definitely getting other stuff if you pick the Kudu, but if you want the Kudu, hey, I'll get that to you. Uh, so the other ones, like the Tangram Vector and uh, the Ganzo Axe, um, unfortunately, I already sold that. I wasn't thinking straight. So, Paul, pick one of those, and you can have that sent to you ASAP. And right now I've got the 9018. I still need to do the review on this one. This is the uh, San Remo 9018. It's got these tools in the back. Uh, full-size uh, sibling of a smaller knife that looks very much like this. But let's open this package now that my sister sent to me. And uh, these are knives that I've either purchased myself or some vendors have decided to send to me. And what I do is, because, because our uh, Canadian Border Services Agency, CBSA, is now stopping totally legal knives from coming into Canada from knife stores outside of Canada to regular citizens. They're stopping, I don't know, about a third of the knives that are coming in, uh, just folding knives. But uh, from those folding knives, a lot of them are getting stopped, especially if it's a flipper knife, you know, it, they tend to be getting stopped by CBSA and confiscated, even though they're totally legal. So what I do is I send all my knives to my sister in Nebraska and uh, from the manufacturer or the vendor or whatever. And then she sends them to me, and every single package that she has sent to me this year has come through, no problem at all. So I'm asking, is there somebody maybe in the United States, because I'm getting a lot of Canadian friends of this channel that are wanting to get knives from outside of Canada. Is there somebody in the United States, somebody who watches this, who wants to help out Canadian citizens? If you'll be that person who will accept knives and then you'll ship them to Canada for those people, if there's somebody who'll do that, if somebody wants to step up the plate and do that, I would very much appreciate that. Uh, my sister can't do it for other people. She's got her own issues and uh, she does it just for me. I wouldn't expect that person to do it for free and that person only do this. You clearly communicate to the Canadians that you won't be held liable if CBSA stops the package. You know, every single package has gotten through so far, and it's been 10 months now, nine months, since CBSA started really pinching down on the knives. But if an American friend of ours is willing to help us out like this, he can't be held liable for any packages that get stopped. So if there's an American who's willing to do that, let me know. Now, last year, last month's winner of Patreon, I finally got your knife in. And I'll be sending this to you. Uh, this is the winner from August. And uh, I didn't have a knife that he wanted, but I haven't been reviewing filleting knives in a while. And so here's that filleting knife. Look at the size of it. This has got a nine inch filleting blade uh, made by Buck. And, uh, oof, that'd be pointy. I just 
poke myself. Uh, it's got some good spring to it. I've just opened this the first time I'm touching it, so it's got some good spring to it. I'll do a full review of this knife. Oh, it's got a sharp back edge too. Isn't that nice? So it's got a flat spine here, and then from here forward, you've got a sharp back edge, sharp tip, sharp belly, uh, a big filleting knife. Uh, and so I'll be reviewing this in October, and then I'll be sending it to, oh, I've forgotten your name, the winner from August. So there's that knife. That's why this came in a big box. Ooh, this will look at last. There's this little leather pouch. Why would I be getting a little leather pouch? Let me see what else I have in here. Because of this, that's why I ordered uh, this knife. Well, let me put it aside and I'll put it back in there. I ordered this knife and uh, I think it came from Knife Center. It wasn't Knife Works. Anyways, it's the, a Svord a little folding knife, titanium handle scales. <laughs> I like the Svord knife, so I wanted one of these, and I wanted the uh, titanium version. And this little leather pouch is for putting the knife in. Uh, it'll get used to it. It'll get used to it over time, but I'll be reviewing that. And here's another one of the knives that I wanted to review. And, well, not review. I had sold my other one for some crazy reason, and then I missed it so much, you know, I got another one. <laughs> so I got the Sword uh, Peasant. But this is the stainless steel version with uh, 12C27 steel instead of the uh, carbon steel blade. So Sandvik steel blade. So I'll be doing a video. I'll be talking about this one when I do the other video. Um, we've got this, and this is, I'm going to go talk to Bandit, and then I'll get what this is for, so hang on. Bandit was just barking up a storm upstairs, weren't you, buddy? Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. <laughs> you don't want to give me five? There you go. He does it better when he's on the floor than I ask him to give me five, and he does. So he was barking up a storm because somebody was at the outside. And we've got a big window. Uh, our living room window comes down to about eight inches above the floor. So he can see out anytime he wants. What I was saying is I finally got the proper leather sheath for this. Uh, this is the... Uh, This is the Buck 112, so it's a nice small fixed blade knife, but I didn't have the proper sheath for it. And I got this knife uh, through one of the friends of this channel whose Canadian tire store was selling off all of their Buck stuff. And this was a display unit, but it didn't have a sheath. And so now I have the proper sheath for it. And uh, so I'll be reviewing both the knife and the sheath in an upcoming video. Two more to go. We've got uh, this Civivi knife, my first Civivi, and um, oh wow, my sister didn't open it. Usually uh, she opens these packages first, but she didn't open it, and I'm very thankful for that. Read the instructions before opening or using the knife inside, it says on the Civivi box. Let's open this up has a pouch and it says Civivi on there. Not very many of the budget class knives come with pouches, but uh, there's the pouch that comes with a uh, microfiber cloth and a little bit of information as well. And here is the first Civivi knife that's going to be reviewed on this channel. Look at that. I love this harpoon style blade. Hollow grind. Isn't that beautiful? Blue anodized liners. Nice skeletonizing I can see in there. Deep pocket clip right or left. Forward choil. It's a liner lock. 
That detent is very good. That, yes, that detent is excellent. Good solid hold, a little bit of jimping on the light switch. So we'll be reviewing this. Features a nitrogen enriched steel and a G10 handle. That's actually a nice box. This took a very long time to be shipped to me, and so um, Mastrop gave some discounts, gave some refunds because it took so long. So we've got a bead blasted blade, and a lot of guys don't like bead blasting. I don't really mind, probably because uh, where I live, it's so dry, uh, there's not rust problems. Uh, and so some people have bead blasting uh, uh, corrosion issues because of bead blasting, leaving tiny little uh, imperfections on the steel. But this is the smoothest bead blast I've ever felt. Actually, it looks more like a stone wash. That's a finish I haven't really seen before. That looks awesome. Cutting edge is very sharp, very thin behind the grind right here. Access lock. It's not super smooth yet. It'll get smoother with some use. Uh, thumb studs. Yeah, didn't quite lock. Wow. Right or left pocket clip. And uh, I won't be selling this one. This one will not be one of the ones that's going to be on the list of knives that uh, the best tech, I mean the best tech that the uh, Patreon winner will be able to win. This is a good size user knife. I like it. This knife, it just feels right. I think this is going to be something I'm going to be carrying quite a lot. Yep, the access lock goes over the tang of the blade quite well. Nice lanyard hole, open pillar construction, some skeletonizing in there. Feels nice. So the Perpetua uh, Mass Drop Series knife, uh, this one's number 0097. Yeah, Nitro V is the steel. <laughs> That's the nitrogen enhanced steel. So I uh, like this pocket clip too. So there you go. Nice, sort of a dull gray color. I like that pocket clip. It's not going to announce its presence too much in the pocket. We'll do a full review of this and all of the other knives that I've unboxed and a whole lot more. I don't know if I'll get all of this done in October or not. We'll just give it a try and we'll see what's going on. Thanks so much for being part of Canadian Cutting Edge. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters, especially to you guys. You guys are awesome. Hopefully the numbers of you guys will come up uh, hopefully by the end of the year, there'll be like 45 people or 50 people on the Patreon supporter list. That would be, that's, that's my target. Um, we'll see. Thanks so much for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, always cut towards your chum. <laughs> uh, chum is an old English word meaning friend, buddy, pal, but it's also a modern English word meaning that mess of fish and stuff thrown into the ocean to attract sharks. Don't want to cut towards that chum. I want to stay away from that chum. <laughs> Anyways, cut away from yourself, not towards yourself. Bye now.